So, hello everybody, and tonight we're going to do an unboxing of a game called Time Stories. And I have to apologize for the glare, but it's unfortunately not possible to do this any other way. Um, for those of you who know Time Stories, this is the base game and you know what it contains. And I will be spoiling probably some of the base game, but also other expansions. So if you haven't played all of the expansions, just, you know, switch off now. If you don't want to be spoiled, switch off now. If you want to see an unboxing and me telling you a little bit about how the game works, you can. Um, you should maybe watch the video that will follow this one, which is a rules explanation video. So essentially, what is Time Stories? Time Stories is a game that was intended by the author team um, to resemble their... Um, role-playing experiences that they had when they were role players in their day um, but they decided to kind of put it more into a board game I guess which is a lot more scripted um, so that more people could enjoy the storytelling aspect of it and it's more like a board game so it's maybe um, a lot less difficult for um, for a group to get together and play it because when you want to play a role-playing game you usually need a game master or dungeon master who actually puts the story together and guides the players through it and every one of us who has ever dungeon mastered knows that um, sometimes especially when you work full-time when you have other commitments being a good dungeon master sitting down and preparing really good games can be quite time-consuming and sometimes doesn't work out at all so they were probably trying to mitigate all of these things and they came up with this idea of time stories in this game, um, you play agents of a consortium that has managed to make time travel work um, by using something called a tachyon insertion mechanic. Now, um, you at the moment, the scenarios that I've done so far um, don't really have a lot of time travel in terms of you don't travel through time multiple times in each game to run into the paradoxes that would happen normally when you, for example, travel through time. So far, no one has, has encountered their earlier or younger selves um, or their grandfather and managed to um, steal the grandfather's girlfriend so that they were never born in the first place. So these things haven't happened yet. Then also not really necessarily addressing this part of time travel and the problems of time travel. However, um, they do um, have the premise that they have managed to time travel, but also to bring people to different places. There is one that's um, set in a medieval kind of scenario where it's called the Prophecy of Dragons, which is not on Earth. Definitely. But then there are others like the Marcy case or even the Asylum one that's in the base box that are definitely set in a certain place and time um, on Earth. Um, I think you can have up to five players, I want to say, or maybe four is the max. Um, and when we open it, we get a little um, booklet that tells us to go and buy Splendor. Um, and it gives you an overview of the time stories. We have um, the Prophecy of Dragons, um, the B Behind the Mask, Lumen Fidei. Um, I can't even read this one. I can't read Brotherhood of the Coast. Then we have Antarctica Mysteries, Hollywood Secrets, and um, that's Estrella Drive. Here we have the, um, the Operation Endurance and um, the Marcy case. Now I know and have played the Marcy case um, as well as um, the Prophecy of Dragons and I've seen playthroughs of Behind the Mask. Now one of the big things is that the idea is you play through the story as it unfolds but you will probably not be able to solve the story in the first run through. So you have to do it again and um, again, and sometimes again, um, which means you sometimes have to reset the whole game or sometimes certain items or things stay with you from game to game, from round to round. 
but it does get repetitive, but that's also the idea of the game. You get a second chance at trying to fix the past, as it were, or maybe multiple chances. Um, so once you've, I think, played a scenario three or four times or twice or three times to solve it, the replay value is probably zero for a very long time until you maybe have forgotten the red herrings or the bad things um, uh, or maybe some details. Um, some people then take on the role of a dungeon master more or less and bring other groups in and basically just, you know, like nudge them sometimes or make sure that they don't make mistakes and just watch other people experience the game. And a lot of people say this is less a game than an experience and it can't be soloed because the idea is that everybody just basically sees a certain portion of the information that's displayed because all of the information is hidden and then you would role play your way through the story and um, because you're not allowed to take cards and read them to other people and i believe that this is true that a lot of it depends on the experience but since i role play twice a week i um don't really need that kind of experience so i play this solo and it does work solo and i was on a on a discussion with other people on um, um, a solo board gamer um, Facebook page um, only the other day and um, there were people who said yes you can easily solo this and other people like you can't solo this it's not possible mechanically speaking it is possible except for the endurance expansion because in the endurance uh, endurance expansion spoiler 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 you have madness conditions which alter your behavior towards the other people you're playing with and of course you can't I mean you cannot pretend to do this um, or not easily pretend to do this I guess if you play on your own but of course if you choose to play on your own it's like a choose your own adventure some people said it's like Sherlock Holmes detective agency which I know which I played when it first came out in the 80s and I went back to it recently I liked it then I still think it's okay but it's dated a lot dated I would say and it doesn't really compare to this because this game has a great visual appeal so um here we've got the rule book and i mean this is already um beautiful artwork here um i don't know if they have updated the rule book um from the first edition but um i've read it and it's actually quite good i mean i don't really think it's it's that difficult here you've got little stickers and um, so you have four agents um, so these are the stickers go onto the dowels that represent the agents. I guess you could also use coins or chess pawns if you wanted. Here you've got your normal chits. Um, so these are um, life tokens, life points over here. These are shields um, with uh, skulls, which mean that if you roll a skull on a combat die, um, they repost and then you can take damage. These are um, shields that make you lose time. These mean that you take damage anyway. These have special um, uh, functions depending on um, the scenario, which changes and which change. You've got so-called status tokens, which sometimes, uh, you know, you might get this token and then when you get into a, um, into a location, there might be a card that has this symbol on it. So it means unless you have this status token from a previous encounter, you cannot access a certain location. Here you've got more tokens. Um, these ones um, have changing um, results and functions in different games. So in the Marcy case, for example, the green ones are health kits that you can use to restore life points and the brown ones are used for ammunition and the yellow ones are used as noise tokens so when you when you fire a gun for example you make noise um, next up we have the board which I'm going to show you as well because it is a board game it's a storytelling game but it is a board game and I'm opening this out it is about the size of the um, board for Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island. I would say it's pretty much the same size actually. Um, so, and I can't unfortunately zoom out anymore. So, 
on the um, this game is card based. I'm just going to show you a pack of cards that comes with the game. It's actually quite sizable. First of all, it's very thick, but also it's almost as long. It's as long as my hand. So these are um, long cards. Um, and it's very important to read this. It says, do not open before reading the rules. These cards contain the story. They contain the locations. They contain the, ag um, the, the agents, the receptacles that you can inhabit. So basically your avatars, if you like. They contain the items, the location cards. Um, the whole story is essentially told through cards. So it's very, very important that you never read a card unless you have been instructed to do so. But how this works is essentially you have um, a map up here, four pieces of a map where you can basically move around and you lose time as you do so. So it's all about time. So here you've got a timeline starting at zero and ending at 60. And you basically, whenever you perform an action, you take at least one time unit for it and you move your time unit marker until you run out of time. And then you either lose the mission or something else happens. Up here you've got simply um, empty spaces which are called codices, so codex one through four. They are used for um, usually if effects or events that stay in play. Um, here you have your item deck, um, and I think here you've got the mission success and um, failure cards. Um, here you've got um, uh, the locations, and I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll try if I can swivel the camera. Maybe. Yeah. That'll do. Um, I'm experimenting with a boom at the moment, so and I'm not quite happy with it. I don't think I'll continue using it. Anyway, so here we have A. B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are the location cards where you then, for example, let's let's say you're on a boat and you go to um, the bridge. So you could have a location which is called bridge and you have a general description card that goes here. And then you have um, up to seven cards that form the panoramic view. And this is really a panoramic view. It's all about the pictures that you see because they play a very important role in the game. And you basically lay them out like this and then you decide where you go with your agent. And you say, okay, I'm gonna go to the wheel of the cap, where, to the wheel on the bridge. I want to speak to the captain, so I'm gonna go to the captain's seat, you know, and then you would see um, the picture of the wheel part, and then here you would see the captain's seat and so on and so forth, and you place your agent there, and by placing it, your dowel that represents your, your agent, you get to reveal the card, but you only reveal it to yourself. So here you can place um, those status markers that we saw earlier. And at the end of the day, as you go along, as you move through time, you move through the map over here and un the story unfolds before you. Um, the rules are very, very simple. Um, what is not simple about the game is remembering all the information, retaining all the information. Um, not only is the information and vital information contained in the text on the cards, but also in the artwork. And in one case, on a card which, um, although you have access to it, a lot of people didn't use because they decided not to go for that particular thing. I'm not going to say any more. And a lot of people ended up losing a certain mission because they missed a piece of information which was available on a card, but they simply didn't read the card, which is understandable if you knew what that card was. So whenever you play this game, I think one of the things that everybody has to be aware of and keep saying is read everything carefully, look at everything really carefully, look at pictures, look at anything and everything. The artwork matters, the wording matters, and here we come to another issue. And I know this because I'm a linguist and I can totally relate to this. The original version of this game is French. It's written by a French development team and of course it needs to be translated. And unfortunately, a lot of the time 
when you translate anything, some things will get lost, especially when you <clears throat> don't have professional translators. And I know that a lot of the time, unfortunately, since good translators cost, cost a lot of money, especially in games, and I know this from video games, but I also know this from these kinds of games, they get people who are not native speakers to translate into whatever language they would like to translate into, people who may not be gamers, people who may not have played the game, don't understand the game, and then you sometimes get translations that are so bad that you can actually just forget about the game, especially if the information is contained in the words. So I know that in the German version of the Asylum game, of the Asylum scenario, which comes with the base game, which you can see in front of me here, um, there were very severe translation errors. I know that there were complaints about inaccuracies. I'm not saying errors, but inaccuracies in the English version as well. I don't know if this is an updated updated version, if they have changed it, but I don't know. It's It, it doesn't really matter. But it is um, important to note language is important. And um, if you are unclear about something, and those of you who watched my... Um, my um, unboxing of Pandemic Legacy Season 1, which is the German version, also noticed that I was commenting on a card where the description of the ability of the character was really weird. And interestingly enough, loads of people on Board Game Geek complained about this and said that this was very unclearly formulated. It's not clear what it actually means if you played Vanilla Pandemic and the English version thereof, you kind of can guess what they are trying to say, but they're certainly not saying it in German. So again, language is very important in this game. Um, so if you're going to play it, try to play the French version, which I can't because I don't speak enough French. Um, and if you can't, um, especially with, I would say, the Asylum and the Marcy case, try to get the most recent editions. I think that there is at least a second edition of the Asylum one. And I believe this is it. Um, but also go to Board Game Geek, try to avoid the spoilers, but also, you know, try and check out if people have noticed inconsistencies or possibly errors which make the game maybe un um, impossible to solve. Um, I hope that this doesn't happen, but I do know that there were quite a lot of complaints um, earlier on. Um, so I will do a playthrough of the Asylum. Um, scenario and I will spoil all the cards because I'm playing on my own and I will show the cards um, to also you know give people an idea of how the game plays and what it looks like you will have spoilers all over it um, but I'm really looking forward to this I have the Estrella Drive and um, Lumen Fide in the mail and I am going to do a playthrough of a fan-made expansion which you can play on tabletop simulator on Steam, which is called Heresy. Go check it out on boardgamegeek.com. Um, the lady who's made it or whose team has made it also provides a fully printable deck. And I saw pictures of the printed cards which she had done, which she, had, um, which she got a company in the US to do, and she showed us the cards that they produced. They are stunningly beautiful. The artwork is amazing. And I would really recommend it. And from what I read, also the scenario is really cool. So that's Time Stories by Space Cowboys, a French group of developers, um, game developers. Um, I think they have now got, is it 10 or so scenarios altogether produced by them? We've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, it's eight. Plus there is a small one I know that is a, is a kind of, um, I never heard of Brotherhood of the Coast. I'll have to find, uh, well, it's got pirates. That's not my thing, actually. Um, but um, these are the ones that I know um, about. And um, I can really recommend the game. Um, but again, please be aware, you pay a certain amount of money. So one of these small scenarios costs about £17. It's about 32 euros. But you really can only play it, I would say, the once, because then you know 
once completely through solving the whole mystery and um, finishing the story and even then some people go oh I've, I've played this now four times and I still am running out of time I'll just wing through it I'll just ignore the time units because I just wanted to finish and I understand that too however you can pause the game the game comes with this insert where you can actually store a snapshot of where you are at with the game and it explains in the rules how to do this um uh down here it calls it saving like in the good old days in computer games um so you basically put in uh the pawns for the for the players you put in um um your own receptacle so that's the avatar that you're playing plus any possessions they have um you put the um You put the, the, the um, what you call it, uh, the cards um, of the locations here. Anything that you haven't opened goes in here as well. Um, you put down where you are with regard to um, time. So basically how much time units have you got left. Um, and how many life points and ammunition and whatnot does everybody have. So you basically put the big dowels in here and then basically everyone's personal information. And um, all of the discovered state tokens just go in the middle. So they have actually really um, thought this through. So if you want to, um, uh, if you want to, you know, you can you can save the game as it were. So um, that's all from me. Um, Time stories. Watch this space. I'm really looking forward to playing it, and I'm really looking forward to welcoming you on the journey and um, but I do understand that of course due to spoilers and and whatnot um you know a lot of people may want to forego this one but if you've played the asylum case already and you want to see how I'm doing um feel free to join me and um yeah and see me die horribly so um I wish you all a pleasant evening and I'll talk to you soon bye bye